Welcome to the Electronics Basics series. Make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications. I'm going to do a video every day. So make sure you come back again tomorrow. So the first video in the series is about one of the most basic components, resistors. These are quite common through hole resistors, right? Carbon film, metal film resistors. We've also got these larger ceramic type, which are basically a wire-round resistor inside a ceramic package to help heat dissipation. We've also got surface mount parts, which I've got in these books here. This is the smallest ones I've got. These are 0201s. You gotta get really close there. Here's my fingernail, and there's the resistor. Right, 0201s. And they also come smaller than this. Practically speaking, probably don't want to use these unless you have a real reason to. We've also got 0402s, which are slightly bigger. They're twice as big. 0603s, slightly bigger again. So this has come in lots of different sizes. Like I said, we've got these ones here. We've also got these service mount ones over here, like 0201. I've got 0402, 0603, 0805s. I've got some 1206s over here. This rule actually shows you quite well what these sizes actually are. So there's 0201 all the way through. So you've got 1812 on this one. Well, these are the footprint sizes for those particular resistors. Sitting at the back of this gear, you may have seen this one. This is also a resistor. This is a 1000 watt resistor. Okay, it's a Chinese 1000 watt resistor, so it's probably only 100 watts, but I'll put 500 watts into this thing, which is why it's a bit cooked here. But this is just another example of just a big resistor. It's just a wire round resistor. It's just bigger. There's also different ways of reading resistors, depending on what the resistor is. Like surface mount resistors have got like a code printed on them, which will tell you the resistance. There's different formats for that, three letter codes, four letter codes. And also 96 version code as well, which is a bit different. On the through hole parts, then you've got bands, color bands on the resistors. You can then read those off using conversion chart. I'll put some overlays. And then from those bands, you can actually work out what the resistance is. So you actually know what it should be. You can actually measure it. And that will tell you, you know, within a percentage of what it should actually be. It could be 0.1% up to 5% for an average typical resistor. But 0.1 is pretty specialized. So other resistors, which I should have mentioned as well, are variable resistors. Now the big resistor I showed you before, that is actually an adjustable resistor. That was a 50 ohm resistor across the full length, but it had a wiper which I could move along it to change the resistance anywhere from 0 to 50 ohms. These are also adjustable ones. So this particular one's a 10 kilo ohm, so 10,000 ohms. And there's linear and logarithmic types as well. So if you physically move to the halfway position, so it's halfway round, on the linear, if it's a 10k, it'd be 5k from the center pin there to the outer pin, and the same from this side, 5k from there to there as well. On a logarithmic, it wouldn't be the same. It'd be something different to that. Because they basically start off with a bigger differential to start off with, then it gets less and less, or vice versa, depending on where you're going. So they've got a logarithmic scale rather than a linear scale. It does depend on what you're actually using them for and whether you want a logarithmic or linear. Generally, you want linear for most things, all the applications would usually use logarithmic because this is the way your ears work. Logarithmic seems to suit your ears. There's a preset trimmer here. This is uh, also a 10K. See it just marked on there. This is an old style one. This is a slightly more modern version. Same kind of thing. It's got markings on there. What's, what value is this one? 254. Yes, yeah, see that 254 marking just there? That is the value. So 25 with four zeros, which is what that means, right? So 254, do you want to take a guess at what value that is? Well, let's find out, let's measure end to end of the resistor. Okay, not center, center's the wiper. You want to go end to end. So this we'll measure with this multimeter here. And we'll find out what it actually is. End to end, 263K. So 254 is 25 with four zeros. So it should be 250K, but there is a tolerance. There's like five, 10% tolerance on these things depending on the quality of the part, basically. These are referred to as a pot because it's short for potentiometer, which is the full name for the variable adjuster. So resistors are a basic building block for most electronics. Just about every piece of electronics has resistors in it in some form. There's lots of different styles. We've also got ceramic package ones, which are precision resistors like laser cut and all sorts of stuff. Um, even resistors are built into IC, so integrated circuits will have resistor circuits built into them as well to form part of their networks. And basically what I do is I reduce current. Depends on how you use them. A good example would be if you have two resistors like this. Let's say you're putting five volts on this resistor here, and this one's on a zero volt ground rail, and you join those together. If these were both the same resistance value, say 5K, for example, or 4.7K or something like that, it doesn't really matter what they are, to both exactly the same value, the point in the middle here will be exactly half the voltage. So in this case, you could make a voltage divider. 
you know this is a common use for resistors as well and that one's to reduce current so if you've got a device which doesn't you don't want to put too much current into it you can use a resistor to reduce the current because the resistor will then absorb some of that voltage and that current on the base of a transistor you'll usually put a resistor of some kind these days it'd be service mount and that would be used to reduce the gate voltage and the gate current we'll get into transistors later on then you'd want to not put too much voltage in say if you've got a 5 volt circuit or a 3.3 volt circuit for microcontroller and you're trying to drive a transistor if you try and drive that straight into that transistor you're going to potentially be overloading the output of the microcontroller or stressing the transistor because the voltage is too much for that pin so you'd use a resistor there to create a dropper so the current going through the resistor will cause a voltage drop and then you get your 0.6 or 0.7 volts on your transistor gate and you still get your 3.3 volts at your microcontroller without overstressing the output. I know for example it be an LED so if you've got a LED you want to run now those typically will be sort of 10 to 20 milliamps current to drive the LED. If you're running from a 5 volt circuit you need to drop a certain amount of voltage to allow the working voltage of that LED. Now the working voltage of LEDs depend on the colour strangely but different colours have different voltages where they operate at and if you try and put too much voltage in your current will be excessive and you'll shorten the life of the LED or burn it out straight away depending on how excessive that overload is and you'd use a resistor to drop that voltage and hence reduce the current through the LED so there you use a calculator so if you know what voltage going in is your voltage that's required for the LED what it's stated as its operating voltage is what it's stated operating current is once you know the voltage and current you can work out what resistance you need we'll get into that stuff later on maybe thanks for watching See you tomorrow.